Good day, everyone, and welcome to episode 33 in our series on Airport CEO. When we left off in episode 32, the plan was to go away, build up some more money, fix up the scheduler, and then start this episode to build and prepare for... Actually, let me just pause this for a second. Build and prepare for our first medium-sized commercial aircraft. Those of you who were here in episode 32 will notice that the airport looks a little different than when we were last here. And in fact, I've made a considerable number of changes. Uh, Mainly because when our last episode was aired, the comment was deceptively going well. And in fact, deceptively going well it was because the way I had laid out the airport actually stopped me from expanding it. So let me just spend a minute or two at the beginning of the episode to go through the problems that I found and why the airport looks differently than it does now. So as many of you would recall, we did not have these check-in desks over here. And we didn't have, actually, I'll zoom in so you can get a better look at this. Uh, We didn't have medium security up here. We had the small security uh, entry points up there. What we had were check-in counters over here. And these check-in counters over here were linked to this baggage facility here. And they went to our um, stands over here on the western side of our airport and then these stands in turn linked down here or sorry linked to this baggage carousel that we'd built down here and you will also remember that we designated that entire area oops as a baggage collection room well so we put in our first medium stand here And I was going to put in check-in desks over here for that stand and going to run them to a new, which is here, baggage handling area and to a new carousel, which was here. And it turns out that that causes enormous problems for the following reason. When you run the baggage conveyor belts underground, and you run them up like this, and then you go to take them from here and run them there, they cannot cross over. Because when they cross over, they actually link to each other. So, for example, a bag flowing very nicely up here, it's a conveyor belt going in this direction, and it will literally drop the bag on that conveyor belt, and it will end up over there. So you cannot cross conveyor belts, or at least, As far as I'm aware, I haven't found a mechanic for crossing conveyor belts. And secondly, because we had designated this entire area down here as one room and identified, excuse me, coughing break there, and identified this carousel as the Yeah. Sorry, and identified this carousel as the baggage. Okay. Restart, restart, restart. In five. Four, three, two, one, click. Good day, everyone, and welcome to episode 33 in our series on airport CEO. When we left off in episode 32, the plan was to go offline, 
build up our cash reserves and also have a look at the scheduler and see if we can get that fixed up. Well, as you can see down here, yes, we have built up our cash reserves. We're now at $376.9,000. And our scheduler is looking a little sad at the moment, but you can see that it's starting to take some shape. But we'll come back to that in just a minute. For those of you who were here in episode 32, you will now see that our airport looks quite a bit different than the way we left it. And at the start of this episode, let me just spend a minute or two going over what happened. Yes, I did take the episode offline. So uh, we went from episode 32 and I started the game and the plan was make some money, fix the scheduler, come back, get our first medium-sized commercial aircraft stand operational. Well, it didn't quite pan out that way. You may recall that the heading of the last uh, video was deceptively going well. Now, I don't know whether that was prescient of me or not, but it was going too well to be true. And for a few reasons. So let's just go through those. If we start down here, you'll notice that the check-in desks or check-in counters have all changed. And the reason is all because of baggage. It turns out that when you are designing and putting in baggage runs, and say our plan was quite straightforward, we wanted one baggage handling system for the light commercial, and we wanted a second baggage handling system for the medium commercial. Now, this is not unreasonable, especially considering that given that these two are in, say, the middle between the small and the medium, it's a good way to break up the traffic flow. But it turns out that when you're laying conveyor belts, either above ground or below ground, they cannot cross each other. Or at least I have not been able to find a way where they can cross each other. If you've got an above ground conveyor belt and you go to run a below ground conveyor belt past it, it stops and joins the above ground conveyor belt. And if you run uh, below ground conveyor belts, when they cross each other, they appear to drop the baggage on the one that crosses them. So you end up with bags, as far as I can tell, going to the wrong baggage handling system. So what I've had to do is rearrange the check-in desk so that the baggage conveyor belts do not cross over each other and not intermingle. The second problem was that we had designated this entire area down here as a baggage collection zone. And because we had the whole area set up, it was impossible to link the second baggage handling system to any other carousel but this one being the first one that we installed. So uh, just to demonstrate this, we come down here and look at rooms and uh, zoom in. You'll see that what I've had to do is divide up the area and make two separate rooms for the baggage collection. So obviously, This one connects to this one, and this one connects to that one. And if I do this, you will see that uh, from the this side now, which is now uh, because we've separated is now the small commercial. You'll see that the conveyor belt actually travels down here, up 
there and across like that, completely avoiding this area, which is on this side, and that is the uh, medium commercial. Now, if I go uh, and just click on this for a second, you'll see that the baggage connection is to there and the holding connects to these security gates. Commercial, right, very good. And everything is hunky-dory. No crossover and everything is working. And while I was at this process of moving the, uh, well, I had to delete and move the um, check-in desk, I also took the liberty of installing the medium size security check uh, areas. So actually, you know what I should probably do while I'm down here? Is that another um, gate for people to go through? Be cool. One, two, three, four, right? Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three, right? Okay, we'll add another security exit there when we do that. And uh, while we're on the subject, I have also made inside this carousel a staff zone only to stop the passengers from wandering across the conveyor belt. Uh, in addition, I have also added a new uh, vehicle depot and I have also ordered some new vehicles, which are the pushback trucks. Where did they go? They'll be around somewhere anyway, but I've ordered them. Actually, let's go and check um, to see that they are in fact there. Maybe they haven't been delivered yet. Large pull force service truck. No, pushback, pushback. I always get confused with these names. Push force, push back. No, it wasn't a small one. I ordered a large one. Large, maybe. Uh, well, let's just order a couple more anyway. I mean, can't hurt, right? Okay. So that's that. And in the meantime of doing all of that, we were also able to build up tons of money, which means we are running a profitable airport. In addition, I've upgraded our medium sized runway to concrete. And I have also put in the taxi paths for the medium. Up. We've got a check a boarding desk and some seats waiting for our passengers. Everything, as far as I'm aware, is operational. Now, our favorite occupation, ye oldy scheduler, is looking pretty good. So we're on Sunday and on Saturday of next week, we have ske well actually let's go to Monday. Monday on, we have scheduled medium flights. So tomorrow morning at, uh, what's that, five past midnight, our first medium flight will come in. And then down here, we have all our small commercial. Now, if we go to Saturday, You'll see here what I'm trying to achieve. We'll be scheduling our medium aircraft, medium aircraft coming in, and they are currently half an hour apart. That may need to change when we go to a second runway, a second runway, second holding stand. 
But what we are doing more specifically down here with our small commercial aircraft is that we are staggering their arrival for each gate at half hour intervals. So much so that we are taking up much more time down here. And as a consequence, we will be spacing them out much further apart across here. Now, partly the reason for this is if you go and look at, let's pick a good example here. That's not one. Let's just see. See, if you look at forest, for example, the number of small commercial is actually dropping and the number of medium commercial is on the increase. Let's go Maple and yeah, Maple, uh, so Skylink. Skylink has got a reasonable number of commercial, uh, medium commercial, not small commercial. And this is because of our distribution up here. 60% of all the craft offered will be small commercial. 40% will be medium commercial. So in the end, we're hoping to have our servicing of aircraft fairly well balanced out. So having said all of that, that's where we are. And so now we need to start the game off and get ready for our first medium-sized commercial aircraft to come in. Actually, while we're waiting for you, let's just go here. Uh, and see if we can put in our exit at this stage. And the answer is, uh, oop, I'm going to go with no, but it won't be long. I think they're clearing up right now. Two down, two to go. One more. You can do it. Oh, what do we pay these people? Uh, oh, there's a problem. Ye old security. Okay, much better. All right, thank you. Okay, there you go. We're going to have two exits. Now, also worth pointing out that in line with uh, our previous security desk, all of these, except for the one on the far left, only does passengers. The one on the far left does both passengers and staff. So we're channeling all our staff through the one security desk. Now we are going to keep an eye on here for our first commercial arrival, which will be in about uh, seven hours. So just quickly, just quickly, just quickly, let's see if we can not schedule some more down here. Uh, C233322. Who doesn't want a 32? That's good value there. So that's CLM. Forest is 32. There's a 6. Sure. No, I mean, all in favour of a six. We will get this sorted out eventually. Goose. Um, two, three, two, three. Two, three, two, three. Well, okay. So you sit there and you go one, two. And that should sort you out, okay? Okay, let's go up to three. And when we get close to midnight, we'll rein it in a bit so we can see our first medium-sized commercial aircraft coming into our airport. So we've got a little way to go. Actually, while we're waiting there, let's just do the U-Butte maintenance. 
So our airport is fully functional at all times. Uh, 95, you don't need doing. 90, you're okay. What are you doing over here? 93, yep, all good. We will go back here. Thank you very much. Actually, let's do this and get right down so that we can see our guy come in. There you go. And then just on midnight, we'll go down to one and we're set to go. So where to now? When we get commercial coming in, then we need to expand, I think, to a second medium-sized commercial aircraft stand. That should put us in a position where we make even more money than we're making now. And we should start adding in additional features to our airport. Now, those features should include shopping. Uh, I think we need another toilet area up on the right-hand side for our medium commercial. And shopping, I think we should have uh, a mix, actually, between shopping and definitely a coffee shop. There's got to be coffee. I am not going to an airport that does not have coffee. That is just not... Oh, we missed it. 23.59. Why are you early? Why did you come in early, you horrible person? All right. Ah, so you can arrive at the gate. I see. So you can arrive at the gate on time. Right. Now, here comes. Are you ready for it? Here comes the thumbnail for this episode. Any minute now. Look at that. Nice. Very nice. Our first medium sized commercial aircraft. And they're going into there. Yeah. Oh, that's very good. Now, who are you? You're the fuel truck. Right. You guys are going through the door. I wonder if we should have worried worried about a door and just not left a hole in the wall. Mm, whatever. Okay, what I'm curious to see is the baggage. I want to see baggage going on. Okay, I'm not seeing a baggage handling truck coming. Why not? Why not? Service truck. No. Service truck. Pushback truck. I'm not seeing baggage. I am not seeing baggage. All right, let's check this for a second. Grumpy at Stockholm. We'll stock five, four, four hours on ground. Frequency daily requested services. Okay, what is that? I can't tell what that is. I hope it's baggage handling. Well, let's assume that it, there's no baggage handling required on this one for the minute. All right. Okay, so that's it. It's in. It's working, everyone. We'll, uh, we'll go back to baggage in a minute. Let's just check on that. Did I link the baggage? Cannot connect cargo bay while handling a flight. Really? Reconnect. 
Well, apparently it's connected. It's, no, it's not going to let me move that. Hold on a minute. Ah, there it is. No, it's connected. Right, it's connected. Okay, good. All right, so let's go ahead now and we'll add in our second commercial, medium commercial stand. Second medium commercial stand. Okay, we decided here to put in the two for a separation gap for no other reason actually, but that we can. So we're going to go medium size, medium quality here. So you are in and we are going to put in, pay attention, we are putting in more because more is always better. Uh, and we are going to continue to expand. So, okay, let's just do that for now. We need to not have a wall between our two sections. We need to designate you as a secure area. And we need to put some flooring down. What did we say for flooring? Was it this one? I think it was that one. Let's just do a quick sample. Nope, wasn't that one. Actually, I think it was that one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was that one. Ah, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, apart from the fact that we could completely mess up our flooring arrangement, but sure, that seems all to the good. We're going to put in a check-in desk. And we're going to put it in in such a way so that I can actually see what I'm doing. No, check-in desk. Goose. Boarding desk. There you go. Um, on the left. Second on the left. Second on the left. That's interesting. Second on the left, like that. Sure, and some seating, because you can. One, two, three, actually while we're here, uh, and because we've got some money, let's just medium size ferns. I reckon ferns are the go. That should keep our guys busy for a minute. Putting in our second medium stand. Whoop, oh, did it again. That's better. Okay, stop fiddling with things. Pressing buttons that you don't know what they're doing. Shocker. Right, now. Do we need more transportation services down here. Do we need more transportation services down there? We've got those, we've got one of those. Service car stop. Nope. Nope. Got bus stops, got car stops. Don't have any bus shelters actually. And we should have a subway entrance. $100,000. You know what? Why not? Who doesn't want a subway entrance? Now, where would you put a subway entrance if you were a subway? Um, you know what? It No, that was not going to work. But that would work. Because... 
Okay, what does that look like up close? Okay, let's go over here for a minute. Subway. Right, so that's the way in. And obviously it has to be outside, but not touching something. How odd. All right, just hold on a minute. We're going to experiment with this. Let's put the walkway out too, because that seems to be where it's coming from. Then we'll take the subway entrance and we'll put it there. Sure. Then because we're caring about our individuals who are coming and going from our airport, we will add some lighting, if I can remember where lighting is. Infrastructure and transport? No. Nope. Decoration? Lighting is a decoration. I wouldn't have thought so. Um, but sure. We got lining over there. We do. Okay, that's fine. We seem to have lighting just about everywhere. <clears throat> yep, <clears throat> pretty good. There's a little bit of crossover in front of some of the doors, but I think we'll be okay with that. All right, so we've got subways, we've got stuff happening, and we're building our new. Let's just go down here and check our tiles. Yes, they are the same tiles. Excellent. Okay, we are going along nicely. Oh, we didn't put a door in. Actually, did we put security in? You know what? Let's just run security across there. And then put a door in. Sure. Like that. Uh, I'm not going to change the color scheme just yet. Okay. How long before you want to take off? Fuel level. It hasn't been fueled. O four thirty five. No, O eight thirty five. What? Oh, it's just new aircraft. O eight thirty five. Right. So we missed the takeoff of our first one, but that's okay. O eight thirty five. All right. How are we doing over here? We should just check the maintenance again. You know what? Let's just be on the safe side. Very good. Okay, that's looking not too bad overall, overall. All right, up here, I think we need a bathroom. Of course we do. Now, what do we do over here? Um, in terms of bathroom. What did we define that as? Staff, no. Desk, no. Seating, uh, seating. Decoration, seating. Um, infrastructure? Can't remember. My gosh. I do not, oh, bathroom. Of course it's a bathroom. Six by eight. Okay, six by eight. So we might as well do the same sort of thing. So 
So. Six by eight. Um, six by eight. Two. Two. Three. Three. And, uh, no, I can't remember. You would think that I would put one for the overhang, wouldn't you? And I did. It's too wide. It's too wide. It's too wide. Of course it is, right. And, right, so... First thing we're going to do, because the bathroom is trying to make it look just that little bit nicer by putting a plant thing in the front of it. Uh, I might as well try and keep some consistency in design. So, right, hand dryers in the middle, two, four, right, got it. Bathrooms, where are bathrooms again? There they are. Excellent. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Bang incredibly well, I would have thought, except I can't see where the end is there. Oh, one, two, one, two, and hand dryer is, hand dryer is where? Cannot see the oh yeah, okay. And we have a bathroom. Beautiful to behold. But mm, we're gonna have to come back to scheduling at some point. Medium stand doing okay. Oh eight thirty five. Oh eight thirty five. Oh, 835, right. Let's go up to two. Let's see what this guy does come 0835. That's our forest. Very nice. Here we go, oh, 0.838 and still not moving, oh, 0.835, oh, 0.843, any minute now, hmm, okay. Well, I hope you want to bring this up, but you're running late, mate. Hmm. Interesting. No notification that he's late. Oh, no, no. Let's just pause this for a second. Check the scheduler. On Monday, FA ninety six O eight thirty five O four O four thirty five four hours on the ground O eight thirty five to park. Status landed. And no sign that he's taking off. Locate aircraft. Well, there it is. It located it. All right. 
no idea why it's late though. Okay, so there's another aircraft in at 9.10. All right, let's see what happens here. No notifications coming up that he's actually late. Cannot land at stand is 01R. Hang on. If, but there is no stair truck on the stand. FA95. Are you FA95? No, you're FA96. Okay, hold on. FA. FA95. GW163 cannot land as stand Easter one is still occupied or about to be occupied by a previous flight. Relocate, activate, deactivate, rename, change color. Okay, I need this flight to take off, but it's not giving me an option. And the question is, why not? Okay, let's have a look. FA-96, East 1, it's landed. It's taking 102 passengers. It's overscheduled. Turnaround time. It, yep. Has it not? No, it's disembarked. What's this mean? It hasn't boarded its what? Deboarded passengers. Service round process. Refueling process. Loaded luggage. Ah. Hasn't loaded any luggage. All right, we've got an issue. Go to random passenger. Go to aircraft. Right. Can I not force this to take off? Flight active. All right. What happens if your FA-96, what if I cancel the flight? Oh, flight sort of landed cannot be. Okay. Okay. So I have no idea. Why you're not going, but then also connect service car setup. Boarding not started. Okay. Pushback not started. Refueling completed. Deboarding in progress. Boarding not started. Why not? Pushback not started. Where's the pushback truck? All right, hold on. Pushback truck. Set pushback point. Ah, ooh. Really? Okay. Baggage bay. Airport baggage handling service is disabled. What? Airport baggage handling service is disabled. What? Seriously, boys and girls. Operation. Who turned it off? Well, there you go. I don't know what happened there.
still hasn't boarded any passengers. Why not? No flight scheduled. Lock stand connected. Don't charge. Don't change or dear stand connection while stand is in flight. No stand. No. Well, the stand's connected. Okay. I. Okay. Well, how come the other ones, the flight before that worked okay and this one is not? Well, what are you? Service truck, fuel truck, okay. Service truck, okay, we don't have a pushback truck. Well, at least I'm not seeing a pushback truck. Service truck. Service truck. Right, hold on. Well, we've got a bit of a problem. So, vehicles, pushback truck, pushback truck, none. Assign this vehicle to us. Are you serious? Right. Medium aircraft depot, right. Well, you learn something new every day. Pushback truck. What? Now it can't even see the vehicle. Really? Uh, medium aircraft depot. Right. Vehicles. Pushback truck. None. Basic vehicle. I have no idea which one I have just assigned you to. Because I changed the name there, but it didn't change the name in here. Oh, but down there it changed it. Hmm, tricky. I have no idea. It would be helpful if you started boarding. Or even more helpful if you gave me an error message. There is no stair truck on the stand. F95, no stair truck on the stand. Seriously? They've changed it. Ah, because they used to be a gantry or a walkway. I didn't even pick that up. A stair truck on the stand. A stair truck on the stand. Vehicle overview. No. Uh, economy. Procurement. Stair truck on the stand. Right. Stair truck. This truck is a perfect complement to any remote stand. 
as will allow passengers to board on any plane without the use of a jet bridge. I did not see a jet bridge. Did anyone see a jet bridge on the medium aircraft? The jet bridge. Jet bridge. You know what? Just because we can. Road checkpoint vehicles. He bought an aircraft. Why would you want? Okay. I think we're going to have some issues around here. I think we've got some issues around here. He's late, but he's not leaving. He's late departing. Nobody else can land, of course, because he's still there. And according to this, nobody's got off and nobody's got on the aircraft. Go to a random passenger. He's not having any fun. He's going to Calais or Dunkirk. Um, and there is no reason for the delay that I can see. Oh, what was that? That's baggage guy. Well, this is pretty poor form. What on earth are we going to do with him? Okay. Is that a stair truck? Let's see where you go. Man, you are slow as a wet week. I'm going to be really annoyed if I need a stair truck to operate that aircraft stand. I wonder if I did something really dumb like accidentally put a remote stand in there. Medium. Easter one. Commercial stand. Medium stand. Let's just, I wonder, I wonder, aircraft stand, aircraft stand, asphalt aircraft stand, asphalt aircraft stand. A bigger aircraft stand where medium class aircraft can park and perform turnarounds. Requires ramp agents to perform inspection and baggage handling. Bigger aircraft stand where medium class aircraft can park. You goose. Look at that. It needs. Ah. Uh, well, that wasn't intuitive at all. Okay, so let's just, let's just, let's just. Right, 47. Okay. Why on earth did we need a stair truck? All right. My goodness gracious me. Okay, there was no indication that that would be the case at all. So I suspect that now that they've introduced the remote stands, somehow all the medium aircraft stands uh, have some of the remote characteristics with them. 
Well, there's an interesting thing. Okay, anyway, we sorted it out. So let's just wait and make sure this guy gets off the ground and that we've got no more trouble with this. And then we're going to call it um, a troubleshooting episode, I think. We are, well, okay, points for solving the problem. Uh, not intuitive at all, but we did it. And uh, hopefully now, okay, are we not boarding? All right, hold on. No, we are not boarding. Why are we not boarding? Uh, we are not boarding because there is a delay between when a passenger leaves the aircraft and when they board. So that would be the cleaning. So, oh, man, this guy is going to wreck our schedule to the max. You know what? Let's cancel this flight here. Oh, hold on. It's Monday. Yep, let's cancel this flight. Click to cancel the current flight. Note that cancelling of flight. Yep, okay. So cancel it. Right, we can't cancel. Let's go to Tuesday. Can we at least cancel you? Nope. Can we cancel you? Okay. Well. All right, hold on. What's that X for? Closing the panel. All right. Can we cancel you? The answer is no. So cancelling flights doesn't work either. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> okay, that's not intuitive. If you go up here to cancel a flight, you should not... Uh, there it is. Yeah, we need to cancel it because it's just ridiculous. So I wonder why it didn't show up. Or I wonder why I didn't see it. Yep. We need to just clear this. All right. Now, hopefully, that'll help us get back on schedule. Uh, okay, we're boarding. Look at that. We've got guys hanging out all the way over there. Hmm. Well, I think we might just put another seat in, do you think? Yeah, I think. Um, we'll leave room down here because we want to put our... Um, shops and uh, money-making enterprises down here. All right, so how are we doing? Actually, that looks like a much better... Um... Yeah, I like that. That's a pretty cool-looking thumbnail right there. So if we're lucky... This guy is actually going to take off 69 out of 100 too. Wow, got a way to go. So where are the rest of the passengers? Why aren't you boarding? No flight's good. Billy. Okay, you're taking off. Where are all the passengers? Stand is connected. Station 2. Lo locked stand connection. Remote stand. Okay, so it's not a remote stand, but it's kind of a shame that they don't have air bridges between the terminal and the 
thing. I didn't even notice that when it went in, that it's a walkway and not an air bridge. A little bit more work in there for the developers. Okay, how are we doing uh, boarding wise? No, that doesn't tell me. 81, so 20 roughly. Actually, let's uh, let's just keep an eye on that. As soon as we boarded, or as soon as we've got all our guys on board, um, we should be. I'm going to see this through. I want this aircraft to take off so that we make sure that we've got all our problems settled down and we're not going to have any more holdups with our medium aircraft. My goodness, what a debacle that was. And only a couple more to go, and we should be set for takeoff. Of course, one thing you have to say, though, in all fairness, the game is developing and gaining a lot of complexity as it goes along. So it's very difficult to make sure you've got everything bedded down in the code when you release it out. Is running late at gate 04? No, I don't want to keep that. Um, so that complexity is very hard to run across all the uh, consequences of what you do. You need a huge testing regime for that. So hats off to the developers. Uh, the game is actually getting better, and it is alpha. So it's not going to be um, a highly polished game at this point. But some of the things that they're adding are very nice indeed. Are we not ready to go yet? Oh, one more passenger. Come on. Mine gotten Himmel. This our one passenger, man, if you were on if you were the last guy on an aircraft that I was waiting for and we were three hours behind schedule, I'd be really unhappy with you. There you go. Okay. So we're loaded and there goes our stair truck. Now at some point we need a pushback truck to come along and push us back. You would hope any minute now it will arrive. If a 96 is running late, no, we don't want it to wait. Okay, take off, push back. Wow, where was the pushback truck? That's fascinating, wasn't it? Okay. All right. There we go. All right, you know what? This has been such a trial. I'm going to follow you to make sure you take off. And then when you're gone... We're going to assume that everything will run hunky dory from here on in. Hey, this is pretty good graphics. I like this. Actually, you know what? Oh, whoa, look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh you moron. There we go. Goodbye. Holy dooly. What a performance that was. All right, there you go. Oh, and the next guy's in. All right. 
So, with a great deal of trouble solving and problem solving, there you go, we've got medium aircraft in an operational. And we've expanded our airport to put our second medium stand in with new uh, boarding gates and passenger seating down here, plus a new toilet. And oh my goodness, what an exercise. Anyway, we've got it sussed now, so it shouldn't be a problem. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the episode as much as I found it frustrating. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Airport CEO. So, I thank you very much for joining me. If you have enjoyed the ex uh, the exercise, yes. If you have enjoyed the exercise of getting medium aircraft working, uh, I'd appreciate a like. Otherwise, have a good week. And I look forward to seeing you in our next episode. So until then, it's Das Bedania. <laughs>